Well, the sound's turned off. Yeah. yeah. All right. So there's some progress Wait. too. Uh, it's another team talk. <gasps> <laughs> time passes, time, time team flies. Talk 14.3. Welcome to Team Talk 14.4. Time flies is the subtitle. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, the next topic is we uh, are investigating or trying or experimenting with injection molding. Okay. You're familiar with injection molding? Uh, yeah, basically, I know. What's so, up? but please explain. Yeah, it I'd me. love to explain okay. stuff. Yeah, the idea is you have a cast mold, mm -hmm. a negative form, and plastic gets injected into that form. Mm -hmm. So you heat it up, make it liquid, and then inject it into the negative and take out the positive form again. Mm -hmm. And that's done with pretty much any plastic part in any product worldwide, any monitor, any laptop, anything that's yes, plastic yeah. is for injection molding mm -hmm. and you can produce a lot of parts in a very short time and very cheaply yeah. because the plastic itself costs nothing. The form you can reuse again and again and again. A million times basically. Yeah. So the problem is <laughs> that for just a few parts it makes no sense mm. because the form, the mold is rather expensive but then you can make as many copies of the injected mold as you want. Mm. So obviously this only makes sense if you make thousands, millions, and so on. So for injection molding for us, or in small quantities, we made a trick or we, we came up with something. <laughs> Never believe. <laughs> <laughs> so what we did is yeah. Manfred created a 3D printed negative mold mm -hmm with a high temperature resin. Okay. Yeah. So that's uh, printed on an SLA based uh, printer mm -hmm. and the resin uh, is resistant to around 300 degrees Celsius. We used one of the 220-240 uh, melting point plastics mm -hmm. and with our CNC mill, the Tormach, which we covered in lots of videos already, how we brought it into the basement, how we milled something. Now we're injection molding with it. With the CNC? With the CNC mill. It's crazy, but it works. How does it work? So there's uh, the form gets inserted at the bottom. Mm -hmm. There's a small hole at the top and small holes at the bottom to get the air out while mm -hmm. you push in the plastic. And the tower of the CNC is used to ram a kind of cylinder through a plastic heating cylinder. Okay. So we are in a, putting in the, the raw plastic at the top, then this ring gets heated up to the 240 degrees, when we tried it then with 260 degrees. And then the ram of the CNC mill goes through this cylinder and stamps basically the liquid plastic pushes it into the form below. Mm -hmm. and then with bit, you take it out, you cool it off. That all sounds very dangerous. <laughs> yes, very dangerous, very dangerous. <laughs> we, we even broke the cast form already. <laughs> <laughs> Did you were you in the same room while this happened? Yes. yes. Yeah, really? Yes. It's not that dangerous? No, not you at all. You won't get liquid plastic over your no, skin? No, 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 not at all. Okay. <laughs> so then you take out the, the part with the plastic inside, you unscrew mm -hmm. it. Normally in an ejection mold machine this all falls out automatically, so it can yeah. be done quickly in our sense. In our case we do it all manually, we unscrew the form and take out the cast mold. Mm -hmm. And with the first attempt, unfortunately we set the pressure too low <laughs> or the temperature a bit too low. Okay. But the result was that the the edges didn't the, fill up. Or? Yeah, the cast wasn't filled entirely. Okay. So there was a part of the uh, form missing basically. Yeah. So on the second run Manfred felt very enthusiastic and he uh, maxed out the pressure <laughs> which unfortunately broke the cast mold because the pressure was too high. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that resulted in an almost perfect injection mold but you can see the cracks and it also filled up the cracks and the shape of the mold was broken mm -hmm. afterwards. But in general Big success, 
because the plastic is actually properly injected. Mm -hmm. Temperature is okay. We still need to figure out the perfect balance between pressure and temperature. But in general, it works really well. And even Which part exactly did you mold? Uh, this one was uh, a new kind of heat sink mm -hmm. for the micro set. Okay, out of plastic. Uh, it's a, a special uh, heat conductive graphene or graphite based okay. uh, mixture. And it's said to be as good with uh, heat connectivity as aluminium. Okay, sounds so good. And now the next step is, since we know that in general the, the, the way of injection molding with the Tomac works, and it's quite fast actually, the mm. time you take to insert the, the material, press it into the form, take the form out and inject it is maybe a couple of minutes each step. Mm -hmm. And uh, now the next step is first we want to try to preheat the cast mold, because currently it was room temperature, which yeah. might also aid in not making the form too That's a good idea, well yeah. fitting. And uh, the next stage as well is to, instead of 3D printing the mold, we will CNC mill it from metal. That shouldn't right. break easily. <laughs> but then this is a great way how we can create, for example, this heatsink part, maybe uh, buttons or dials for the XM remote mm. or parts on the camera that are not meant to be super raw solid. Mm. These will also be made from metal, but there are still a few things you can make with plastic. Nice. The Axiom Remote first prototype hardware is finished. Really? Yes. And you won't believe what I have here. An Axiom Remote hardware prototype. <laughs> <laughs> and you got me quite hot and bothered before, but... Mm. How do you turn it on? <laughs> <laughs> this is unassembled. We still have uh, two boards more to assemble. There's mm -hmm. one already fully assembled. You have buttons, dials. There's a microprocessor at the bottom. If you look here, mm -hmm. it's a PIC microcontroller. Mm -hmm. And the hole in the middle here is where a high density connector connects to the LCD. Mm -hmm. And the LCD <coughs> I also have here. Mm -hmm. That's the connector. And that's the LCD and it will go exactly where the outline is marked here. Nice. So Amazing. next steps. Uh, we will 3D print an enclosure. We'll program, bring up again the hardware. This is rather low tech compared to <laughs> most of the other hardware we built. No FPGA involved. Yeah. So that should be pretty straightforward hopefully. And then do some tests with menu structure, graphical user interface, mm. displaying different kind of menus, current settings, make it's all the buttons easy. work, and so on. And currently, uh, this is all very standard hardware. We didn't choose any very particular yeah, well, it uh, be affordable button. Yeah, well, all, the most of the switches and buttons are affordable, but there are ones where you have to press more firmly, where you have to press more lightly, mm. where you get a kind of click or where you can feel that you press the button. But mm. here we just used any of the shelf components just to get the first prototype out the door. Yeah, sure and start developing and then as next step we can deal with what makes the best haptic impression when you press the button or nice. how does the rotary encoder feel and do you feel the indents properly and so on. What's RGB? Uh, there's a status LED down um, here okay. with the power on switch. The LED is a RGB? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Very good. I'm curious how this evolves now. Me too. <laughs> so, Max, are you still on Facebook? Yeah, yeah. I, I am, actually. I don't too. use it a lot, but Me I too. I never post anything outside a purpose, actually. But recently, a few companies or big Facebook players abandoned Facebook mm. because of recent privacy concerns, concerns with Obviously, yeah. uh, data privacy and how they sell your username mm. and all the information and everything. And so, yeah, it's not the kind of platform that very much is in line with our philosophy. <laughs> but on the other hand, we do want to keep people informed. Yeah, it's kind and of a necessary evil. Yeah. And, uh, there are a couple of more open, more secure alternatives. Like there's Mastodon mm. as Twitter replacement or very similar mm -hmm. kind of thing. And there's Peertube as a kind of replacement for YouTube. That's 
self-organized video hosting. And there are a couple of other interesting open source, more <coughs> privacy aware yeah. platforms. But it's only as good as many people it reaches. To. Exactly. It's a niche community currently. And so, yeah, we're not really sure if we should turn off Facebook entirely. No, it's but a hard question. We are aware that it's not a very good place to stay for very much longer as well. Yeah. No, it's a hard question what to do with the Facebook yeah. accounts. We'll see. If you have any ideas, let us know. <laughs> How? How? Through the contact form. Nice. Or the comments. <laughs> <laughs> You'll figure it out. <laughs> you remember last year we shot a video inside a metal smelting facility? Mm -hmm. I do. Yes. And so far it has been very exclusive because it was only shown as exhibition part in the Vienna Museum of Applied Arts. Mm -hmm. But now, brace yourself, they allowed us to publish it. I thought we already published it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we wanted to, but we never did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so here oh. it is now. Wow, Yes. amazing. <laughs> Look at the metal. <laughs> It's a, such a heavy metal video. <laughs> it's actually light metal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but we shot the heavy metal as well, remember? That was not part of the video. Yeah, what was it again? Uh, the other thing was, I can't remember what material exactly, but it was much hotter than the aluminum smelting we did. Yeah. I can't remember. Because aluminum doesn't light up by itself when mm. you smelt it. But this material did, and it's very bright. It doesn't so, matter. Hmm? Enjoy the video. <laughs> 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 Great. It's getting hot in here. Let's turn on the air condition and we'll see you again all cool for the next team talk.